Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So uh, I started this video the other day to do book mail and then um, I just got busy and didn't get around to doing it. And in the interim, I ended up getting like four more books in the mail. So this is what was going to be a very small post is now going to be a slightly larger post with, um, yeah, a bunch of books. So <laughs> let's talk about them. All right, so the first thing I wanna do since I'm really um, only here like once a week is to go over what I'm currently reading. Th this is the crazy thing. Right now I'm, I'm in the middle of four books, which is admittedly more than even I usually take on. Uh, I'm doing one on audio. I'm doing one with a book group on Instagram. I'm doing one as part of the Aspen Words long list, which I'm almost through. And then the other one is strictly for my pleasure. <laughs> um, but so this is what I'm reading for the Aspen Words long list right now. The Town of Babylon by Alejandro Varela. I am absolutely loving this. Weird thing was I started this book a while ago when it first came out because I had a lot of people tell me how great it was. This is a prime example how sometimes a book at the time, it's not for you and can just strike you for whatever reason wrong. And that did this to me the first time. I got about 35 pages in. Clearly, I wasn't paying attention because I didn't remember half of what I had read when I started it again. <laughs> and I don't know why I didn't respond positively to it the first time because I'm loving it so much right now. I'm about 100 pages in. It's about a man who goes home to take care of his father briefly. And while he's home with his parents, he attends his high school reunion, which is like a 20 year high school reunion. He kind of reconnects with old friends, an old love, and what kind of happens. He's also having marital problems of his own. It's really good. As you can tell, I'm, I'm tabbing a lot because Varela is just a phenomenal writer. I love the point of view in this thing. He has a short story collection that's coming out in a few months, which now I am absolutely salivating to get my hands on. But I think he's like a major, major talent and I'm really enjoying this. Also enjoying this, Mame, which is what I'm listening to on audio. This is about a young woman um, in London who, um, her parents are from Ghana. Her mother, her parents are still married, but she's living with her father who has Parkinson's. Uh, and it's her life as a 25 year old dating all, just all of it. Uh, someone said that this is kind of Bridget Jones diary. That is not at all what this is. It couldn't be more on Bridget Jones diary. If it's anything to me, what I'm gonna tag this as is kind of Fleabag-esque. But Jessica George is really funny. The, it's just, it's a really interesting, interesting book. Again, great point of view, great character. Um, this was, I know, one of the Read with Jenna books and it's currently in development to become a series. Uh, I could completely see why because it's a, just a kind of protagonist you fall in love with. I would highly recommend this on audio, but if not, I think the book would stand up on its own, certainly as well by itself. The book that I'm reading with group, the massive reading group over on Instagram is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. We're kind of, um, the idea for reading this was because her new book is due out um, in a few months. And so this group is reading to finish this right before the new book comes out. I have never read her before. She had one other book previous to this, I believe. And apparently, I don't know how, what age, but she was very young when she wrote this. It's monumental. I, I am loving it. I'm a little over 200 pages in. It's very involved. And I say that not to um, intimidate anyone from not picking it up, but like, you know, anything that starts with a character chart, not to mention the fact that everything is um, done around an astrological chart. 
Each chapter as you go on, like the waning of the moon, it starts with a massive first part that slowly begins to diminish like the moon until you get to the end and the last section of the book is the smallest. There's so much comprehensive thought that just went into the construction of the novel that we haven't even begun to break down yet. And luckily there's people smarter than me on this reading group who are talking the rest of us through it. But uh, I, I'm just very enthralled with it, find it really interesting, um, and would, um, yeah, I don't know if you've read it yet, or if you have it, it's, it's, uh, it's worth the time. It's really good. Last, um, I've talked about this before, this comes out on the 21st of this month, McMaster's Guide to Homicide and Murder Your Employer, which is the first of a new series by Rupert Holmes. Rupert Holmes... I always go back to the Pina Colada song, which is what he's known for. It's probably the best. But also the musical The Mystery of Edmund Drood, uh, which he um, wrote the book for. He also, uh, you know, he has a couple books that I've read that I really like, Where the Truth Lies is one of them. I forget the name of the other one, but I think he's great. This is really fun. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a very prestigious school but not for kids, uh, really for adults who want to kill someone. And the school is a, uh, teaches you, imagine Hogwarts, but you're learning how to kill your enemy. Uh, and your thesis paper is how you're gonna do it. So really, really fun, very, very witty. Uh, I might've said this before too, the, when the book comes out, the audio will be read by Neil Patrick Harris, which should be a lot of fun. All right, so that, uh, those are my four, um, books that I'm currently in the middle of. Now, on to book mail. This first book, I, I, start, I always say this, like, I'm really excited about this, I'm really excited about this, and I am. Let's just say I'm really excited about all of them, and I will try not to be redundant and constantly say, but I'm really excited for this, but I am really excited about this, which is Big Swiss. I'm seeing this all over, Jen Began. This is about a woman who transcribes, um, she works for a therapist, and she transcribes all of the notes for the therapist from the sessions and she ends up falling in love with one of the patients and then ends up through circumstance meeting the woman and she recognizes her in line one day by her voice because she's transcribing all these audio tapes of these sessions and an affair ensues and what happens um i love this cover so much but i'm so this is something that um might dive into my February TBR, if I can get through the three other books that I still have waiting to be read. Uh, I'm excited for this one. The other thing that I'm really thrilled with that Astro House just published is Collected Works by Lydia Sandgren. Uh, this is another little bit of a chonker of a book. Let me um, read you the beginning. Martin Berg's wife, Celia, disappeared years ago. His memories of their carefree college days seemed ever out of reach, and the intellectual curiosities that once made him the object of her desire had given way to midlife uncertainty. The methodical and quiet life he's made for himself and his adult children couldn't be further from the one he dreamed of in his youth, when the manuscripts lying around his apartment were flush with promise and his ailing publishing house was still new. Perhaps nothing reminds Martha of Martin of these failures more than his friend, Gustav Becker, a wildly successful painter who returned to Gothenburg on the eve of his career-defining retrospective. Gustav, meanwhile, is hurting too. His obsession with Cecilia's inexplicable disappearance has made his art fixated on her image. When posters for Gustav's retrospective plaster Cecilia's face on major billboards across the city, Martin's daughter, Rachel, or Rackel, R-E-K-E-L, learns a haunting fact that points her towards her mother's whereabouts. She and her brother chase the clues across time, memory, and Europe to discover why Cecilia abandoned her family with the imagined hope that the question of what makes a person leave can never be answered. Uh, this was like a huge hit apparently in Sweden. So this is the first time it's hit the States. Uh, I've seen a few people have read it and said it's fantastic. It seems like the total kind of book that would appeal to me, which is why I bought it, and maybe you too. Uh, the Illumicrate book for this month, I know really nothing about other than tell you what a gorgeous cover, God Killer 
by Hannah Kaner. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, look how beautiful that is. Um, let me read you the back of this one. Kissing ripped her sword out through the god's side in a stink of blood and dank water, and the shrine behind the waterfall shattered. The god made no sound as her flesh turned back into the current and sank into the river, releasing it for the town and villages it fed to thrive or fail. But she managed a last barb to Kissin's mind. When Midrin falls to the gods, your kind will be the first to die. I give you God Killer. That's it. One of my favorite covers this year so far, What Napoleon Could Not Do by DK Nuro. This is a brother and sister who moved to the United States from Ghana. And the, the story of their successes and failures as they chase the American dream. Love this cover. I've been watching DK, DK on Instagram as he's, because the book launched this past week and he's on a book tour. Um, I just love, I love when an author has a new book, especially a, a, a first book, because there is such a incredible unbridled enthusiasm and sheer joy and watching him as he goes around the country now to promote this book it is clearly that so excited for that the foghorn echoes by danny ramadan i knew nothing about this book had never heard of it had never seen and then my friend ryan read by ryan over on instagram posted about this and said it's so fantastic and why isn't anyone reading this so i read the synopsis and was like i need to have this immediately I'm going to read it to you, and maybe you'll say the same. Hussam and Wasim are teenage boys living in Syria during America's 2003 invasion of Iraq. When a surprise discovery results in tragedy, their lives and those of their families are shattered. Wasim promises Hussam his protection, but 10 years into the future, he has failed to keep his promise. Wasim is on the streets seeking shelter from both the city and the civil war storming his country. Meanwhile, his psalm, now on the other side of the world, remains haunted by his own ghosts, doing his utmost to drown them out with every vice imaginable. As Hussam and Wasim come to terms with the past, they begin to realize the secret that haunts them is not the only secret that formed them. Split between war-torn Damascus and Vancouver, the Foghorn Echoes is a tragic love story about coping with shattered, shared traumatic experience and devastating separation. I think it sounds amazing. So the next book is Atomic Family, which just got sent to me by Blair Publishing. So thank you very much for this copy. I don't know really anything about this and I haven't seen it anywhere yet, but it's set during the Cold War. It is about a um, set in South Carolina in 1961 and uh, Dean Porter, the, the kind of patriarch of this family, works in a nuclear power plant, or a, uh, sorry, a nuclear bomb plant. And it all um, focuses on, um, will there be an impending war? The effect it kind of has on the full family. So again, know nothing about it. I'm going to try to maybe read it before the end of the month so I can tell you guys more about it. Um, but I think it's a really interesting cover at any rate. All right, Glitterland by Alexis Hall. Um, this was actually a, um, a reissue. This was an older book by Alexis Hall, Alexis Hall of um, the kind of sweet rom-com boyfriend material and then last year's husband material. Um, this is, I think, another kind of romance that revolves around, uh, not the romance revolves around, but the kind of story's fulcrum point is about anxiety, uh, is about um, people with um, mental health challenges, and that's kind of the centerpiece of this book, to my understanding. So, have no idea, like the cover, uh, my friend Dennis really liked it, so we're gonna try. 
I don't know where I saw this next book. Absolutely have no idea, except it wasn't here because it's not in the States. Um, it's called Ascension by Martin McGinnis. And I loved this cover so much. And I didn't even see that it was something that was going to be published in the States. So I went ahead and got it. Uh, I'm gonna read you the blurb about this as well. Lee grew up in Rotterdam, drawn to the waterfront as an escape from her unhappy home life and her volatile father. Enchanted by the undersea world of her childhood, she excels in marine biology, traveling the globe to study ancient organisms. You know what, maybe it's because I was so obsessed with the octopus, I don't know. When a, f when a trench is discovered in the Atlantic Ocean, Lee joins the exploration team, hoping to find evidence of the Earth's first life forms. What she instead finds calls into question everything we know about our own beginnings. Her discovery leads Lee to the Mojave Desert and an ambitious new space agency. Drawn deeper into the agency's work, she learns that the Atlantic Trench is only one of several related phenomena from across the world, each piece linking up to suggest a pattern beyond human understanding. Lee knows that to continue working with the agency will mean leaving behind her declining mother and her younger sister and faces an impossible choice to remain with her family or to embark on a journey across the breadth of the cosmos. So really have no idea. I can't wait to tell you all more about this book, but like what a beautiful, mysterious, kind of great cover that suddenly called to mind <laughs> the opening scene of Jaws. But okay, so sounds really good. All right, and the last book was something I just got from MCD, who are so nice to me, I'm, I appreciate it and thank you, called uh, You Know Her, a fierce, funny, gonzo feminist thriller that will be the talk of the genre. If you read one thriller this year, read this one. Um, okay, basically the blurb in the beginning is they say, Killing Eve meets my sister the serial killer in this lush, savage, southern gothic about two women, a fledgling murderer, and the cop hell-bent on catching her. Oh, very Killing Eve. Uh, I should say Killing Eve first season because then it went downhill and it became terrible. So, all right, so I have no idea, but this sounds really, really fun. Um, and this will be published in uh, April. So I will try to read this before April 4th to give you all the skinny for you thriller lovers if you should get this. All right, that's my group, peeps. Um, thanks for hanging in. I hope there's something in there that piques your interest maybe. Let me know. I will um, list all of those books at the bottom and if they haven't published yet, I will try to remember to put their publication dates as well. Please uh, let me know what you're reading right now, how your February is going. It's insane to me that next week we're halfway through February already. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful week, weekend, wherever you are in that time continuum when you're watching this video. And as always, thank you for dropping by. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe, and I will see you all soon. Thanks.